In our short daily gatherings at uh, work, teaching through the Gospel of Mark, and we spent all week in the account, Mark's version of the account of Jesus' transfiguration. And uh, I've mentioned several times Matthew and Luke's versions, of course. Matthew's the one who has uh, the alternate or the extended saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, hear him. Mm -hmm. Mark and Luke just mention, this is my beloved son, hear him. Luke is the one that Luke's version records this, this statement here of uh, Jesus and Moses and Elijah speaking with one another. <coughs> who appeared in glory, this is Luke 9.31, who appeared in glory and spoke of his decrease, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Some translations say his departure. Now, I don't, I don't refer to original languages very often, you know, but in the original languages, this is a word that we're familiar with. It's the word exodus. 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 Yeah, the exodus he was about Amen. to accomplish Amen. at Jerusalem. These two brothers from the presence of God knew of this exodus. The one who lived through, of course, who led the exodus that we think of. <laughs> the exodus. Mm -hmm. And the other brother who exited this world in a fiery chariot pulled by fiery horses. Yeah. That's where we get the word exit, isn't it? <laughs> it would seem to be anyway. They talked about his exit, his decrease. It made me, it, it made me also think about, from this perspective, the word decrease in the English is a different, you know, we, we have a little different perspective of it, but... but that's one perspective of, of what Jesus passed through, his decrease. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 13 that he was crucified in weakness. Well, that was a decrease for Jesus. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he appeared as a man. That was a decrease for him. And he died the death of a criminal. That was certainly a decrease for him. That he died at all was a decrease for him. The prince of life. Peter talked about the prince of life died. You put to death the prince of life. Amen. He said in one of his sermons there. I think it was in the second sermon in Acts. You put to death the prince of life. But he had already said, of course, in his first sermon, death could not hold him. It could not. He did decrease to that. To death on a cross, as Paul says there in Philippians. But it couldn't hold him. It couldn't hold him. This decrease. This decrease. This word is also used by Peter in 2 Peter, where he talks about his own decrease or departure. He said, I want you to be able to remember these things after I have departed, after I, after I have decreased. Speaking of his death. And then uh, the text concerning Joseph. Brother Given mentioned this earlier about Joseph. Giving instructions about his bones. And the departure. Yeah. Israel made, at, at their departure, take my bones with you. Mm -hmm. Their departure. It's the same word. Same word, exodus. It's only used those three times here in Luke. And in First, Second Peter, and in Hebrews 11, about this departure. So here were these two men from the presence of God speaking about Jesus' decrease, his departure. The New American Standard uses that word. There, his departure. And of course, he passed. He 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 departed from the things that he was. Now, in the presence of God, he'd, he had he left his glory, some aspect of his glory there. And in this, in th at this event, some of that glory was displayed in the change of the skin of his face and his clothing. 
It was displayed again, even as they spoke about his decrease <laughs> that was going to come. And then he, and then of course he spoke to Peter, James, and John about that. And they discussed with one another about what resurrection, what this resurrection could mean. Resurrection from the dead. They discussed that with one another. They, they couldn't, couldn't, at this point they couldn't conceive of it. They couldn't conceive of it. But brethren, because of the preaching of this gospel, the things that have been made known to us, we can conceive of it, can't we? Amen. We can conceive of this departure, all the things that our Savior passed through, His decrease for a time, for a short time, and then His return and His increase, His increase back to the Father and His enthronement at the Father's right hand. See, all of these things we think of when we come to the table, when we remember these things. Now, when we recall these things, these things have been, have been uh, in the preaching of the gospel, uh, we, we have the full version, so to speak, the full version that we're going to get while we're here, at any rate. And, and we've even seen, uh, by uh, the experience of our brother John, we've even seen the picture of these things in heavenly places, haven't we? The lamb that was slain at the center of the throne. We, we've, we have that picture there as well. So all of these things that we know that the, that the Master passed through in His decrease. His decrease. We remember when we come to the table. He did this for the sake of His Father, His Father's name, for the sake of righteousness. He didn't, he didn't decrease in righteousness now. You remember, in His doing this, He was fulfilling all righteousness. Yeah. He did, he did decrease in his blessedness, so to speak, in that he became a curse for us. But then he returned again. He, he didn't himself decrease in his spotlessness or blamelessness, but he did take on sin and become sin, didn't he? even though he still remained spotless himself. He still remained spotless. But he did become sin. At this. Only God could do this. See, only God could do this. Amen. That he could bear our sins in his body on the tree and yet remain blameless himself. Only God could do this. See, this is the wonder of these things. The wonder of these things that have been accomplished for us and that we remember Amen. then when we come to the table. Amen. Let's pray together.